Welcome to the series. This time I'll show you my rag based chatbot, which I built with Next.js, Langchain, OpenAI, and TypeScript. Basically, rag stands for retrieval augmented generation, which basically means that we augment or enhance our AI capability by training it with our own custom data. That's what is happening here. For example, I trained my chatbot here with this website. This is a big, long sales page for our company. One of the uh, products, SLG or Simplified Local Growth. This is a really long one. And here, I use this URL to train it. So let's say if I ask it a question, how much SLG costs? Let's go. And boom, see, it answers the simplified local growth costs $27. We go here, and that's exactly what we see. It can answer pretty much all the questions from this entire web page. So this time, I also add a little flexibility to be able to uh, train this bot with pretty much any other URL. So for that, we're going to go train AI. Okay, so this is where we train our AI with URL. As you can see, this is our previous URL. And here we're going to change that into this. We're going to copy this URL. This is another a website of our client, 1-800-Granola. Uh, and this is their About Us URL. So we're going to take that and go back to our training. And here we're going to replace. And we're going to hit Start Training. Now, this is going to go on for about a couple of minutes because there's a lot happening here. While this is going on, let me explain what, what is actually happening behind the scenes. All right, so this is the RAG part one. This is the training session. There, it actually divided into two parts, part one and part two. First part, we train the AI. Second part, we retrieve that data from vector store and ask it a question, right? In a QA format. So here the training is going on as you can as you saw before. So as soon as we insert this URL, I, I'm sending it to a web scraping function where I am using the Puppeteer library and Puppeteer web-based loader from Langchain. From here, we're actually making the call to the real website and collecting all the HTML data from that website and then sending the raw data or cleanup to another function. And here we are using the Cheerios library. Here we remove all the HTML, ASCII, CSS code, etc. Extract the actual text, the clean data. The clean text, then I send it to a text splitting function where I use recursive character text splitter from Langchain, which basically breaks the uh, total text down into smaller chunks, which we can feed to our embedding block. And this is where our vector embedding happens using OpenAI algorithm. And I use OpenAI embeddings functions from Langchain to create my embeddings. And once that's done, we save it to a local Vice vector store. This is a very fast and efficient vector store created by Facebook. And this is great for this kind of QA-based QA bots that we are about to create. And also in case you are wondering about the AI embeddings, I have something. Okay, so this is what happens when a text turns into embedding. The algorithm uses dimensions. For example, apple and grape, if we wanna convert or compare these two, let's say we are using four dimensions here, redness, sweetness, tartness, crunchiness, etc. right? Depending on these dimensions, we give them numbers basically the ai algorithm the embedding algorithm gives them numbers and then converts it into this vector and once we put that these vectors into a vector database this is what they look like depending on these dimensions apple and grape would be pretty close but cucumber would be farther away and this is how ai can differentiate between words or text and also finds these similarities to get us accurate data or answer back. That said, now you know what's happening in the back end. Now let's go back. 
and boom, it is done. All the steps are here. You're making the call, loading the URL to the docs, and then loading that the page content into puppeteer function, and then splitting them up. Then we split them up into smaller chunks and then create the vector embeddings in smaller batches. All this will be cleared out once we go to the code. And then we create the FICE vector store. And once it is done, it gives us this message, vector store, FICE vector store created successfully. Now let's go back to chat room. All right. So now, look, this URL changed. Now it is last trained on 1-800 granola. So let's test it out. What is the company name? 1-800 granola. Just like here. Okay, now let's ask, what is the company phone number? Yep, number. It's collected from all the way at the bottom, right here. And let's see, who is company owner? Saul Windler. Just as it says here. And then one last question. How long is the company history? 49 years. See, right there, 49 years history. So this is how we just retrained our chatbot or ragbot with this website. And before it used to be trained on this guy. And now let's ask uh, the previous question. How much does SLG cost? Let's see what it says. Now, sorry, it has no idea what SLG is because now it is trained with 1-800 that said, let's go to the app architecture. All right, so this is uh, what our RAG part two architecture looks like. Basically, this is where we perform a QA chat and uh, you know give our application a chatbot front end where uh, we perform a QA chat with our custom data. And as we know, the first part was training the data. So here, as far as front end goes, I kept everything the same. Uh, you've probably seen uh, multiple times the same architecture. If not, I recommend you visit the previous videos, especially the video number one. And that's where I explain uh, this uh, streaming hook and uh, OpenAI services, et cetera, and uh, the entire front end. So we kept pretty much everything the same. And this is the part we made the change. First, we can create our model with this OpenAI service, and then we access our Spice vector store using uh, this retrieval QA chain function from Langchain. And this is where we send our uh, prompt and embed the prompt. Basically, by converting into a vector, we embed the prompt and send the prompt into the FICE vector store to get relevant data or relevant documents, which matches our prompt. And then we take our prompt embed and the relevant doc embeds, send them to OpenAI API. And this is where the AI tries to answer our question or the prompt accurately by comparing the relevant docs and the prompt vector, and then sends the AI response. And that's the response we send to our chat streaming, and you know the rest. And once again, this is the part two, where we actually form a QA chat, but the part one, as we saw before, is this. This is where we train the AI with custom data. Now let's go take a look at the code at the back end. After we cover this, we're going to go back to covering part two. All right, so we are back at the code, and this is the file train AI with URL file store. And this is under pages and API in Next.js. And this is our backend to create the FICE vector store, basically training the AI. And this, uh, this is a pretty simple piece of code here. We're just creating the backend with Next, Next API request and response and uh, making sure uh, it only takes the uh, close to method. 
but most of the things are happening right here. Process URL to FICE vector, which is coming from this utilities utils folder. But before we go there, uh, let's see what we are doing here. Uh, we are getting this URL string from the rec.body, which is coming from the uh, front end. And this URL we're passing to our function process URL to FICE vector store, which is basically this file right here under utils. And this file, after I bring in our main necessary imports, creating an empty um, string array called logs. And then using this custom log function to fill up that logs array by uh, placing it in you know strategic places everywhere after each block is done and giving it the necessary messages and all the all the way to the end i'm returning the logs to the front end and uh, this is the function that is causing this result all the back end messages and this is how we know we know that all our necessary blocks perform correctly and in the end give us a success message and this is the function and the variable doing it and as we saw in our backend diagram right here after we collect the url we're sending it to the web scraping block which is collecting the html data via the url and that's what's happening here this is the web scraping puppeteer block here i am passing that url to this puppeteer function and it's going ahead and collecting the necessary data from the URL. And here we are collecting that data and creating a page content variable. And this is the Cheerios block or the cleanup block. This Cheerios library I'm using to clean up the, the script and the style tags with the dot remove function. And then extracting all the HTML from the body and replacing the, the style attributes the inline styles with an empty string, basically cleaning them up, then sending that clean text to be you know, cleaned up further. And here we are collecting pure text and storing to the uh, text content variable. And then we are using regular expression to clean up all the ASCII characters from those text content and thus being ready for the splitting, as we saw in the diagram right here. Clean up text, we're sending to the text splitting block and break them apart into chunks to get ready for the vector embedding. So this is the splitting block. All the text that we collected from Cheerios, we're using this document class, which uh, comes from Langchain, to get all of them ready for the uh, splitting function. Here we're using recursive character text splitter function from, sorry, class. Here we're using the recursive character text splitter class from Langchain, just creating this uh, splitter object. I'm choosing uh, 1000 as a chunk size, 1000 characters, and overlap 50. So, with this splitter object, we're invoking this split document function and sending our documents to that function. And this is the variable, the split documents. Oh, you know, this will hold all the chunks. Now we are ready for our vector embedding block, just like here. And here we are making an API call to the Open API using their vector embedding algorithm. And I use OpenAI embeddings function from Langchain to create the embeddings and then push them down to the FICE vector store, just like here, creating the embedding object. And normally, you know, in smaller cases, we can just move straight to, uh, you know, create our embeddings. But uh, in this case, since uh, I have experimented with some long web pages with lots and lots of data. I found that it's better to break them into even smaller chunks by creating a custom batch size. Otherwise, OpenAI will complain that you are crossing their token size. So I created this variable batch size 10 and creating a loop. And inside the loop, I'm making even smaller chunks and feeding to this all docs array. And then once done, I'm moving to the vector store creating block. And here I'm sending this all docs with the smaller chunks and the embedding object that I created here to build the vector store object. And once the vector store object is created, I'm calling vector store.save and giving it a location. In my case, uh, it's right here, Vice vector store inside Next.js, creating a, a local vector store. And once everything's said and done, 
this uh, vector store has been created successfully. I'm adding this message to my custom log vector store created successfully. Thus, seeing this message right here, which indicates the training has been successful. And this is where we click this button to come to this chatbot, which is the front end or ragbot part two. All right, we're back at the back end again. And this time, this is ragbot part two. This is the file, and this is the back end where we are performing the question and answering session with our documents or the vector store, just, just like we saw here. This part is giving us the front end, collecting the uh, user input or prompt, passing to our hook, and this hook is talking to this backend, which is under Pages API Michael Rag Chat, and this is the file we're looking at right here. At the very beginning, we are collecting the prompt, the user prompt from rec.body, which is coming from the front end, and then we are creating our model, the AI OpenAI services, sending it all these necessary attributes it requires or arguments. This is the temperature, this is the model name and the response object. And then we are creating the embedding object using the OpenAI embeddings from Langchain. And this is also making one API call using the OpenAI API to create this embedding object. And this time we are loading our FICE database where all our training data is and creating this vector store. After this uh, vector store is done, we're creating this chain using this retrieval QA chain class from Langchain, sending it the model or vector store as the retriever and return source document set to true so that with all the uh, related documents it finds, it sends us the metadata also. Once the chain is done, we invoke the chain, send the prompt. And once we do, this is what's really happening. We pull up the vex vector store, and invoke this QA retrieval change by sending the prompt. That prompt converts into embeddings and that searches the vector store using this function right here. And file store returns the related documents according to the prompt. Then we take those related documents and the prompt embed. Then we take these related documents embeddings and the prompt embeddings sent to the OpenAI and then the AI looks at those, compares them, and sends the correct answer as AI response. And we send it back to the chat stream and thus get started with a question and answer session with our document chat box. That's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.